Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I am Muhammad and I will be showing you today how to create a CRUD in ASP.NET Core application using the Entity Framework Code First approach. We will be creating a phone book application where we will be able to add, view, edit, delete contacts. The three things that we will need before we start is an IDE, Visual Studio Code, an SDK, .NET Core SDK, and SQLite browser since we're gonna be using SQLite. So, in order to get these three requirements, we need to go to .NET.Microsoft.com forward slash download to download the SDK. It's recommended to use the .NET 5.0. All we need to do is click on download and then install. It's very simple. Similarly, for the IDE, we need to go to code.visualstudio.com, click on download, and once it starts downloading, we need to install it. I have already downloaded this, so I don't really need to do to re-download it. And the last thing is we need, since we're going to be using SQLite as our local database, we need a browser in order for us to check the database itself and open the database and browse it. So for that, we're going to be using sqlitebrowser.org forward slash dl. All of these links are going to be available in the description down below. So once we have downloaded these three requirements and installed, first step is we need to make sure that our .NET SDK has been installed successfully. In order for us to do that, what we need to do is we need to open our terminal. So we click on command spacebar, we type terminal, and once our terminal is open, we need to type .NET dash dash version. And we can see right now we have version 5.0.101 installed. If we have any other issue, like uh, we have uh, the number are not showing or we have any error message coming up, what we need to do is we need to re-download the .NET Core SDK and then reinstall it again. So once we have made sure that our SDK is up and running and it's working, we need to install our Entity Framework tool for us to utilize Entity Framework with our .NET SDK. In order for us to do that, we need to go to .NET and type to .NET tool install dash dash global since it's going to be available everywhere within the OS .NET dash EF. I have already installed this, but if you're installing it for the first time, it's going to take roughly around 10 seconds to download and install. After we made sure that our tool.NET Entity Framework tool is installed, now we need to create our application. So, in order to create our application, we're going to use the .NET new keyword. We're going to specify that it's an MVC application. We're going to give the application a name. It's going to be PhoneBook. And we're going to specify the language. You don't really need to do that, but I like to do it for consistency. And then we're going to give it an OAuth none. We're not going to use any authentication uh, at this moment in time. But if you'd like to know more about authentication, I have another video in my channel. I will put the link for it in the description so you can go how to set up authentication within ASP.NET Core. Once we type the command, we need to click on enter. And we can see now the SDK is creating the phone book application for us. So first of all, let's go in within the application. So we change directory. And let's open this source code within Visual Studio Code. Once we have Visual Studio Code open, let's add the terminal directly from Visual Studio Code. So in order for us to do that, we can go to View, Terminal, and we can see the terminal is showing on the lower parts uh, of the screen. So first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that the application is building. So we'll use .NET build and we can see the application is building and it has built successfully. So the second part is what we need to do is we need to run the application. So we type .NET run and once the application, we can see it's running on port 5000 for HTTP and 5001 for HTTPS. So let's switch back to our uh, web browser and let's visit that link which is going to be localhost 5000 and we can see phonebook application is running which is great. So perfect. After we have run our application and make sure it's running, the next step for us is to 
add some uh, packages to our application in order to utilize SQLite as well as Entity Framework within uh, our application. So the first thing we need to do is let's add the SQLite package. So we go .dot .NET add package Microsoft .dot .entity framework core .dot .sql light and this will install the sql light extension within our application package sorry the second one that we need is dot .not add package microsoft dot entity framework dot tools Okay, I think I'm uh, Microsoft Entity Framework Core. For sorry, typo. And now it should install successfully. Perfect. And the last one is dot .NET add package package Microsoft. dot asp net core dot diagnostics dot entity framework core perfect so now we have these three uh, packages installed in order for us to verify that they are installed what we need to do is we need to go to phonebook.csproj and we can see that the three of them has been installed successfully. So the next step after we do that is we need to update our app settings.json in order to add the default connection string. So we open the app setting.json here and directly after the curly braces we need we add connection string and then we add the main connection string was gonna be called default connection string. So this is going to be our database uh, connection string. And since we're going to be using SQLite, we're just going to type data source equal. And we want our database to be named app.db. Then we're going to be specifying the caching. So cache equal shared. And that's it. So right now, what we did is we added a connection string to our application.json. So once we are trying to set up our database, we have the main configuration for the main connection for our database. So the next step is we just need to rebuild the application and to make sure that everything is still building as it should be. And we can see it's still building and now it has built successfully, which is great. So the next step after we do that is we need to start by creating our application DB context. The perfect place to put our application DB context for this application is we need to create a new folder. We'll call it data. And within that folder itself, we create a new class and we'll call this class application DB context. And we can see we have a new class here after we have created it. Perfect. So in order for us to utilize Entity Framework Core, what we need to do is we need to inherit from the DB Context class. This DB Context class is provided for us by default from Entity Framework Core. So we don't really need to do anything else except using it like this, except inheriting this class into our custom application DB Context. Once we do that, what we need to do is we need to create a constructor for our constructor, sorry, for our application DB Context. So Let's define a constructor and we're going to be given the db context option. And we're going to give it the application db contacts. Application db contacts. And let's close it and we'll call it options. And then what we need to do is we need to send these 
configuration back to the base class so the DB contacts will have all of the right requirements for it to load perfect so right now we just uh, uh, to summarize we created our application DB contacts we have inherited from the main uh, DB contacts which come from entity framework core and then we initialized our constructor the next step is to update our startup class in order for us to include the middleware that's going to be able to that gonna let our application know that we're gonna be communicating with the database and then we're gonna specify some property within that middleware to tell it that it's gonna be using a SQLite database so in order for us to do that it's very simple what we need to do is we just gonna call the services and then we're gonna put add DB context we're gonna specify the class name that we have created which is gonna be application DB context and after we do that we need to specify the options for it so we'll put options create a lambda and then we put options dot use let's capitalize the u use sqlite and then what we need to do is we need to add specify the connection string so we can put a configuration dot get connection string and we'll specify what's the name of the connection string so if we go back to our app settings.json we can see that we have the main connection string is named default.connection so let's copy this and we'll put it here in the parentheses and this is the semicolon should be at the end here let's fix some references so you and let's add a reference to our db context and now we can see all of the squiggly lines are gone and we have added the middleware for our database so once we finish all of that the next step for us is to create our initial migration which is going to be also very simple so how do we do that we're going to use the terminal for it so the main keywords we're going to use dot not since it's going to be a database related so we need to use the ef keyword so we're going to telling dot not to use the entity framework and we're going to tell it what's uh, what's the uh, what's, what are we trying to accomplish we want to add a migration so we see so we need to tell it it's dot not entity framework migrations what do we want to what do we want to do with this migration we're going to add a new one so we have to write the keyword add and then we have to give it a name so we'll call this an initial migration so it's a very simple command uh, the first one uh, identify that we're going to be using the dot net sdk the second one is we're going to be using entity framework from within the dot net sdk the third one is we're telling the entity framework that please we need to use the migration part and the fourth word is we're telling it okay we need to add a new migration and the last part is we're just adding giving it a name once we click on enter it's going to take a few seconds and we can see right now it has built failed because we didn't save our startup class right now if we run it again it should be working let's see build started build succeeded and now we have migrations how do we make sure that the migration has been created on the left hand side we can see that we have a new folder called migrations and if we open it we can see that there's some kind of script that has automatically been generated for us with our migration name here so that means that any migration has been created and we have a new class called application db context snapshot which is basically a snapshot of our database since our database is empty it's gonna be empty which is perfect so after we did this what's the next step we need to tell entity framework to actually implement it so the first step is to create the scripts and the second step is to actually run these scripts so how do we run it again we use the dotnet keyword and we use the word ef so we're going to using entity framework from within the dotnet framework and then we're going to specify the database keyword so we're telling entity framework that they'll have to do some work on the database side and we're going to put the keyword update so what does this mean so dotnet as we have already discussed is referring to the dotnet sdk ef is basically referring to entity framework from within the dotnet sdk the word database is using the database part of our .NET framework, uh, sorry, of our entity framework, and the word updates means that it's gonna look from our uh, within our uh, migration folder to see if there is any 
migration scripts that exist but they are not implemented and then it's gonna go through our app settings get the default connection string and then it's gonna run all of this automated for us and then it's gonna create or it's gonna run the migration for us so as soon as we click on enter let's let's watch here of how a database is gonna be created for us automatically so once we created enter click on an enter sorry we can see right now on the left hand side that we have a new database called app.db which is entity framework which is created it for us all of this with a simple few command entity framework will be responsible for everything now this database has just been created so it's an empty database so how can we check if it's an empty database or not so we downloaded already our uh, sqlite browser so let's open it again and let's open and from within that browser itself let's navigate to where the application is so it's going to be on desktop youtube phone book and app.db and right now we can see it's an empty database it doesn't have any tables which is perfect this is what we want at this moment in time so right now let's summarize we just created our first migration we configured our connection string to the database and we added our application db context so what's next in order to create the phone book the next step for us is we need to create our model which is going to be a contact class which is going to have all of the information that we want to save how do we do that so within our uh, models folder we right click on it we select new c sharp class and we'll call this class contact so what do we want within uh, our contact what uh, what type of information do we want to save basically for this exercise right now we're going to be saving five five things so the first thing is we're going to create a new property it's an integer we'll call it it's an id we'll explain why it has to be an integer or why it's an id so the second one is going to be the first name the third one is going to be last name The fourth one is going to be email. And the last one is going to be mobile number. So since we're going to be using entity framework to create the database for us, and since those records, they're going to be unique. So in order for us to do that we need to have an id and since we already uh, the simplest way is to have an integer as an id so we created the first one is it's gonna be an int id so once we do that and we have the model up and running the next step for us is we need to add this model to our application db context so within the data folder we go to our application db context and here we start adding the db set how do we do that we just type public virtual and we call db set db set keyword uh, let entity framework know that we're gonna convert this class into a table we're gonna use the contact class that we have just created and we're gonna call the table contacts there is different ways that we can use in order for us to change the table name but for now we're just gonna go with the simplest option is using it as contacts from the initialization so once we have this uh, ready, the next step for us is we need to create a new function. Actually, we're going to inherit a function from the DB context class and then we're going to override it. So protected, protected, override because this function is already exists in our basic class. It's going to be void because it's not going to return anything and it's going to be called on model creating and then we're gonna put model builder call it model builder and then what we need to do is we need to call the base class and then on model creating we're gonna send the model builder as simple as that so basically this model uh, 
build a model creating a function it's going to provide us with the ability to manage tables property and have for example if we have multiple tables we can set the foreign keys we can put relationship between the tables for now we're just going to leave it empty and just initialize the base constructor from it after we do that what's going to be for us the second step now we have added the table directly to our application db context we need to just create the uh, add the migration so entity framework will create the table for us so how do we do that we just go uh, again to our terminal we type dot net ef migrations add adding the contacts table Again, let's summarize this, uh, this uh, command. So .NET here means that we're using the .NET SDK. EF, we're using Entity Framework from the .NET SDK. Migrations, we're using migrations from within the within Entity Framework. Add, we're just adding a new migration and we're giving this migration a name. So once we click on Enter, we should see it building, build succeeded, and then we can see done. And if we look at the migration folder, we can see that we have a new migration which is it creates a context for us. We can see it says migration builder dot create table. It gave it a name, all of the ID, first name, last name that we have specified in the class. And we can see that automatically it create a constraint for us where the primary key for context is gonna be the ID. All of this has been all of this heavy lifting has been done for us automatically by entity framework core, which is great. So after we do that, what as same as we did last time what we need to do is we just need to update our database using the keyword .NET EF database update and once we do that we can see we can see that the application has automatically built and it's done one way to to verify it we can just go back to our SQL browser and let's, since this is a free option sometimes you need to reopen the connection again and once we reopen the connection, we can see that our context table has been opened and all of the fields within that table is there, the ID, first name, last name, email, and mobile, which is great. Now, what is going to be our next step after we have successfully created our table and we have checked it? The next step for us is we need to create the controller and the actions. The controller is going to be our main interaction with our database. It's going to be our main... Uh, portal to communicate with the database add stuff to it remove stuff to it so in order for us to do that the what we need to do is within the controllers folder we need to add a new class we're gonna call it contacts controller and then from within that contacts controller in order for us to utilize all of the power of the controllers we're gonna inherit from the controller class and we're going to fix some references which is great okay so once we did that let's just save and let's build the application to make sure that everything is building as it should be okay great build succeeded so the next step is we need to initialize our db contacts from within that controller itself so how do we do that which is very simple we just add a private uh, identifier we'll call application db contacts and then we'll put context. Let's fix the references here. And now let's create the constructor for the controller. And we're gonna give it application db context and we're gonna name it context. And then from within the constructor, we'll just link it together. Context underscore context equal context. Perfect. So right now we have creating a controller we have add, we have initiated our application db contacts but we don't have any actions so the first actions we're going to create is the index so just let's give it a description index index action will show all of the available contacts how do we create this action we just create a new function and we have specific parameters that and specific properties that it should have should have so public async task 
i action result we'll call it index it's not expecting any parameters and we're gonna return for now a view an empty view and then we'll add the code to communicate with the database here and let's just fix some references and we'll explain why did we use async and task in a moment right now let's just add our db logic so we're going to create a variable called contacts and we're going to use the await keyword and then we're going to utilize the database contacts and then we're going to use the contacts table and we're going to type dot to list to list async okay great so let us explain the syntax here so the first thing that we have is we have used the async and task keyword async mean asynchronously so since we are going to be communicating with the database here what we need to do is we need the best approach is because we're going to be reading information from a different source other than the application itself which is going to be our database it's always better to have it as an async request so th for this reason we have used the async and await keywords task for us since it's an async and we don't have to wait for it task is going to be our, our the main way uh, to handle the concurrency within those requests so what we did here is we have just identify a variable and then within those variables since this, this is concurrent we have put the async sorry we have put the await keyword uh, the underscore context keyword here uh, refer back to our application db context telling it that okay we need to have a, some kind of a connection to the database context here tells it that okay we need to use the context table and the last one which is to list async which is going to be a link keyword this one basically gets all of the information from the context table and convert it into a list so we can use it so these three keywords here saved us a lot of work if we're going to write all of this sql manually so right now after we have our contacts we just need to return it to a view perfect so right now we return to a view we're just returning all of the context contacts that we have to the view what's going to be our next step our next step is we need to actually create the views for our new controller how do we do that so within that views folder we need to create a new folder and we're going to call it contacts And within this context folder, we're going to create a new file and this file we're going to be calling it index.cashtml. So we have to call that view based on the action name. So here is the action name is index. We have to call the view by its name. Simple as that. So what do we need to do now? If we look back at our controller within our index action we can see that we are sending to that view a list of context so within our view we need to specify that it's going to be receiving a model of list of contact so how do we define that we have to use the at model keyword and then we're going to put list and then we need to just specify what's the type of information we're going to be receiving it's going to be contacts so we'll just type phone book dot models dot contact and this means that this view currently is expecting a list of contacts so the second step that we need to do is we need to create somehow to some some kind of an html view to display all of the contacts the best way i find is to create a table so let's create a table together so we'll create first a div class row and within that we'll create another div class call dash md dash 12 we're just utilizing here basic bootstrap classes and then we'll create a table here table and let's give this table a class table also another bootstrap class and then we'll define the table head and then we're gonna show td and we're gonna put the id okay let's three four five so it's gonna be id first name 
last name email and phone and let's add another one to manage these contacts so it's gonna be td manage okay great so after that now we need to create our table body t body we we'll close it and then we have to create a for each so we can loop through this list so at for each and then it's gonna be called item in model because basically we're getting this model here and we're looping through it so the next step for us is again let's take these and then adjust them so the first thing is gonna be at item dot id the second one is gonna be at item dot first name at item dot last name and at item dot email at item dot phone and for the manage one we want to add the ability it's not going to be phone it's going to call mobile okay yeah so let's change it here mobile to mobile and for the manage we have the ability to add it and delete so let's create two href which is going to be responsible for those we haven't created any of those actions but we'll create them for now asp that's action we're going to have call it equal uh, edit because we're going to be able to edit this uh, field and then we're going to specify the controller so asp dash controller the controller name is contacts and then it's going to be as simple as just adding a class which is going to be uh, let's call it btn btn dash warning so it will give us the color yellow and then we need to send the id as a query string so we'll put asp dash route dash id equal at item dot id i capital okay and then we close it and we just type edit inside we're gonna do the same thing for the delete we'll copy paste this so the action is gonna be delete and instead of warning it's gonna be danger so we'll get the red color and instead of delete here we're gonna put danger okay great so just to summarize we just got uh, created a table which is going to contain all of the uh, contact list that we have then we have created a for each which is going to be looping over the list of all of the contacts and within uh, this we have created a okay we didn't create a tr so let's create a tr so table row for every one of these which is great okay great and let's fix it okay so within uh, this loop we have created rows uh, within that table and within every row we just created uh, we just showed the information of that contact and at the end here we just created two links which doesn't do anything at this moment in time because we haven't created any of those actions but it's a good thing that we created just so we know what is our next step the last thing i want to add to the index page is the create button functionality so it will allow us to create a contact so how do we do that very simple as well let's again create a new div class row or can do it easily more easily than this within the same div here we we'll just create the same div over again and then we we'll just create a new href it's gonna be a asp dash action equal create then asp dash controller which is going to be contacts so it's going to be creating a new contact we don't really need to send the id let's give it a class so it will have a nice color of green so it's going to be btn btn dash success and then we're gonna name the button create okay great so right now it's a very simple index page let's first uh, make sure that the application is still building by typing dot net build and we can see the SDK is working and then it has given us build succeeded and then now let's run the application .NET run again the SDK is going to do all of the heavy lifting and we're going to be able to see the application is running on port 5000 and over HTTPS on 5001 so now let's uh, go back to the browser and then let's refresh this page we cannot see anything we'll add the link to it in a moment but now let's just directly go to it 
to the controller itself so forward slash contacts and we can see that we have a table it has id first name last name email mobile and manage but it doesn't have any information which is correct because our database is empty and we have the nice green button which is going to be the create one uh, create uh, functionality which have we haven't created yet so perfect so this will take us smoothly to our next part is how do we create the create action so in order for us to do that let's go back to our contacts controller under the index action we're going to be creating the create action so the create action is going to be composed of two things it's going to be composed of the get and a post what does this mean so before we write any code let me explain to you the difference so once we want to go back to that page and once for example within this page itself we click on the create we are sending a request to the dotnet sdk telling it that we want to see a form for us to create a contact but since this form is not it's only going to show it since the dotnet sdk is only going to be showing us an empty form we're telling it okay it's going to be a get so we're basically i'm telling the dotnet sdk get me an empty form so i can fill it up so this is the first thing that we're going to be telling the dot .NET core so we're going to tell it okay we're going to specify an attribute it's going to call http get this http get is basically telling our application create for me a form so i can use there's a much more complicated uh, explanation than that but this is basically the end of it so we're basically we're telling it get me some information and uh, so i can consume it and in our case get me a form so i can fill it how do we create this one so we create we type http get public and then we put the response gonna be an i action result and we will name this action create it's not gonna create take any parameters because it's brand new uh, we're creating brand new records we don't have any previous ids and we're gonna return an empty view as simple as that so what happened here so the keyword here the attribute here http get we're telling the sdk please give me back the object that i want which is an empty view so i can basically it's going to be a form so we are able to fill it in so this is the first part of the create application the second part is uh, sorry the other part is we need to create the actual view so from within the views folder under contacts we click right click on contacts add a new file and we'll call it create dot cas html cs html and from within that create folder first of all we're going to specify a model why because basically we need to tell somehow tell our uh, sdk that in this form right now or this page right now we're going to be creating something that's gonna go into that's gonna do some we're gonna be creating an object which is gonna be doing something within our database how do we translate this sentence into something that our dot net uh, sdk is gonna understand by just typing model and then providing the object that we're planning to send back so basically we're telling it here that for this view itself we have a one model that you can either receive or you can send and this model is going to be based on a contact class that we have already created after that it's going to be a very simple html form we're going to specify the action for this form which is going to be create and then it's going to be we don't have an area so we're not going to use an area but we're going to put a controller we're going to name it contacts and then we're going to specify the method because basically once we click on submit this form is gonna post the request back to our controller and once we post something back to our controller it's the controller is gonna look okay which action is it submitting to we can see here that it's gonna be submitting back to the create okay great but we already have here an action called http uh, create but an http get so how do we handle that we create a http post public 
i action result for now just name it create and since we're gonna be to, we told the view that it's gonna be sending a contact model we need to specify it here so we got contact i will name it contact and for now we just return a view that's all we're gonna do at this moment within on the post one so we just created another uh, action which is gonna be a post for the create in order for us to process the request that coming from the form so now let's continue our work here so let's create a simple div we're gonna be a give it a class of row and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna create another class this is simple bootstrap classes dash 12 and then we're gonna do a simple div another class we're gonna call it form dash group let's delete this and first of all we're gonna create a label telling the user what type of information they need to fill so at this moment we need the first name and then we're gonna specify an input and this one gonna be asp dash for what does the asp stand for uh, asp dash for stand for because we already on the first line we already informed the view that's gonna be a model of contact so asp4 we're specifying which uh, property of that model we want to refer to so in this case we're telling it that it's going to be a first name and then we're just going to specify the type equal text and that's it and let's close it perfect so let's copy paste this so it will be faster so and then we'll put last name and here we'll put last name then we have email and this is gonna be email and this is gonna be mobile and this is gonna be mobile great what's gonna happen after that so the next thing that we're gonna add is a validation summary so in case something goes wrong when we are trying to create the contact we wanna uh, show it back to the user telling it for example the id already exists or we are not able to communicate with our database or any issue that might arise so how do we do that we just create a a summary so div we put asp dash validation summary and we'll put all so it will show all of our errors usually when on the production level environment we don't really show this but since it's going to be a sample application and it's only for learning so we're going to put this and we'll just give it a class so it will be all nice and red and dangerous great the last thing we need to do is we need to create our buttons it's gonna be so first we're gonna create a div we'll call it card dash footer the simple class that we have and then we'll center them and then we'll put button type because type it's going to be submit because we're going to be submitting this form and we're going to give uh, this button a class so it will look nice and then we're going to give it btn btn dash success because it's going to be adding a new record and we're going to call it create contact and we're going to add another href just to, to, to go back to the index view in case we don't want to create anymore so we'll just put in asp dash action it's going to be index asp dash controller we're going to call it contacts and the btn a class is going to be a simple button without anything and we'll put here cancel or we can put return to index better return to index and let's save this and let's build the project again so dot net build as we can see the application is building and the building uh, the application has built successfully which is great 
Okay, let's run it. See if we are able to see this form. So .NET run. And let's go back to our web browser. And let's refresh. Okay, we still have this button here. But what happened once we click on it? Okay, great. It took us to a form where we have first name, last name, email, and mobile. Perfect. But right now, if we click on the contact, create contact, it won't do anything because we didn't specify the actions yet in the, in the action. But if we create, click on return to index, it will take us back to the index page, which is the right behavior that we want. So let's now create the post request for the create. It's going to be a very simple one. So basically, what, first of all, what we need to make sure that the model state is valid. So what does the mod model state mean? Model state means that our object, which is here, we have specified. It has some kind of requirements if we look at it. So it has to be string, 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 string. So let's say, for example, we uh, sent a picture instead uh, of a string for mobile. This is going to be violating the regulation here. So in order to make sure that this is going to be uh, consistent and it's not going to uh, give us unexpected input, we put model state dot is valid, as simple as that. It's going to check all of the validity of whatever coming from the view. If it is valid, it will continue. If not, we have to return. Let's, let's create an error, error so we are able to see it. So we'll put model state dot add model error. We'll give it a string empty because we don't really need it right here. And then we specify the message. We'll put uh, something went wrong. We don't have to give a lot of detail. Went wrong, for example, which is good. Now, what happened if the model state is all succeeded and everything is uh, what we expect? We have to create a try catch. So a try catch means uh, in case something goes wrong with the application, for example, uh, instead of showing a bad error to the user or like a, a coding errors to the user, we just saw a nice message uh, telling the user something went wrong. In order for us to, to do that, in case something goes wrong, we need to create a try catch. So let's, put, let's create a try catch here. And let's fix the references. Perfect. And within the try right now, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this contact, this one here that we ha that came from the view, and we're gonna directly put it into the DB contacts which live in our memory, or which live within the server's memory. So we put await underscore contacts dot add or we can put contacts.add and we'll give it the contact. Since we're speaking with the database, as we have mentioned before, it's better to have it as an await. So this means that I need to make this as an async. And here what I can do is I can put task and then I can put close it again. And now right now this is a async await function. So add, I think there's an add async. Yes. So we can see here that await contacts counted add async, which is great. So right now what we did here within this line is within our uh, application while it's running, we told entity framework, okay, listen, we have a new object that's going to go to the database. Put it and hold right now until uh, we have the command. Put it in, in your memory right now until we have the command from the user to save it. So this one here puts it in the entity framework memory. And in order for entity framework to save it to the database, we need to put await underscore contacts dot save changes async. So the save changes async basically takes all of the changes that entity framework has been aware of and came from the memory and save it directly to the database. After we do that, we just want to redirect back to the uh, index page. So redirect to redirect to action redirect to action and we're just going to go back to the index page as simple as that and in case something goes wrong we'll just like update the model state we create another model state and we'll put let's send back the error message this time for the user so we'll just do it like this and we'll send ex 
dot message perfect and as well at the end of the view i want to return back to the view the object that failed so maybe the user will be able to rectify it okay great let's stop this and now let's run the application again and see if we can actually add a contact so let's go back to our web browser let's refresh it perfect let's click on create and let's add so the first name is gonna be muhammad call it lawand gonna go muhammad at email.com mobile one 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 and create perfect now we can see that the application has succeeded and then uh, we have our information showing here the id first name last name email mobile we have an issue here with our delete button so let's check it out if we scroll down we can see oh we called it danger it should have been called deleted that's it that's the and here btn it has to be danger okay perfect now let's stop the application and running run it again we should be able to see a red button with the delete perfect so now we have the create we have the edit and we have the delete let's create another record we'll call this one muhammad2 last name lawan2 muhammad2 at email.com and let's add the mobile one 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 and create so now we have two records in our database which is great so the next step that we want to do is we need to create the edit functionality how do we do that first of all let's stop the application and then let's go into the contacts controller and underneath here it's going to be the similar behavior as the create so in order for us to let's go back to the browser so we can explain it so in order for us to get this information we need to have two actions which is going to be a get and a post the get here is going to tell uh, asp.net okay uh, go to the get function and get me all of the user's information for this user which is going to be id1 and show it to me in a form the second one is after we added this we're going to post back the changes to our data uh, to our uh, database and we need to save it there so for this reason we're going to have a get and we're going to have a post so let's first create the get we'll just put the attribute http get if we don't put these it's the application will not work so public async since we're going to be communicating with the database task i action result and edit and we're going to be specifying it based on the id so int id and we're going to return a view for now and then it's going to be as simple as doing a small query on the database so var we'll create a new variable which is going to call var we'll call it contact equal await it's going to be underscore contacts dot contact dot where so basically we're using the link keyword here and then we're going to create a link function x dot id will explain these what means in a second equal id and then we're gonna put first or default async and then we're gonna fix the references and then we're gonna explain what's going on here so okay so there's an even better way if we put this here and then instead of the where and we can delete this okay great so the first line here we specify that it's going to be a get which is great we're going to be communicating with the database so we're using the async query and then the task here again we're calling the uh, our database contacts telling it okay you need to go to our uh, contacts table and then within this contacts table you need to look for the first record that match this condition so the condition here is we're specifying that this id needs to match this id so any ids within the table any primary uh, any primary keys which uh, basic based on the id match this id that we are sending you need to return it back to me if not return a null object for example if we put first without our default and we do it like this 
in case entity framework is not able to find this uh, value or this condition the application is gonna crash because it doesn't exist but if we do it like this or default entity framework will return an empty object for us and will tell us and within this action by itself we know that the contact uh, the object that we are looking for does not exist and the application will not crash so once we return it we just need to return it back to the view and we have to do the same thing over again so an easy way to do it is again let's create a new file we'll call it edit.cshtml and we're going to be doing the same thing as we did for the create so the first thing is we're going to do is we're going to define the model it's going to be phonebook dot models dot contact and then we're going to create the same form that we created before but the only difference is going to be the first two lines we're just going to go right now through them so first we're going to create a form it's going to be asp action we're going to call it edit because we're editing a form and then it's going to be asp dash controller it's going to be the contacts and then we're specifying the method to save the information so it's going to be a method it's going to be post and then we're going to specify something called a hidden item what's a hidden item so basically once we want to edit an information uh edit a record for example and uh and we want to load this load this information to the users so we're not going to show them their ids because basically it will not make any sense to them we're going to show them the first name last name mobile and phone number and the email address but if we show them their id it's not going to make any sense for them because they're not really going to use it but we need to keep track of this id when we want to update so for this reason we'll make it as hidden so we create it as an input but we hide it so the rest is going to be as simple as the create we can just copy paste it from there instead of rewriting everything so from here we're just going to take all of this and then we're going to paste it here and instead of success it's going to be a warning because we're editing and instead of create it's going to be edit and that's it basically we, we copied the same form the only thing we changed is instead of the action we referred it back to edit and we added the hidden field ID because we need to keep track of. So let's run the application again. Now we need to see if those are getting populated when we click on edit. Let's refresh. And now if I click on edit, I should be able to see that all of my information are there, which is perfect. The next step for me is how do we save if I do, for example, 111, 111, and 111 and put for example 222 or 333 click on edit this will not do anything because i didn't specify anything within my controller which is the expected behavior now let's fix fix this let's go back to our contacts controller uh, now let's create a HTT, uh, let's create the attribute first it's going to be http post perfect it's gonna be public async task i action result similarly edit and it's gonna get the object similarly to what we had before it's gonna be contact i'm gonna call it contact perfect and let's return the view it's always better to always know how are you gonna end this action okay so after that, we're just going to do the same thing that we did uh, with the create is we're going to verify the model. So it's going to be if model state dot is valid, similar to what we did before. If it is valid, it's going to continue. If not, we're going to just return the same error message as before. And now we need to create another try catch because we're going to be communicating with the database so it's always better to have a try catch for safety and we don't we don't display any errors exception call it ex and so in order for us to 
update we what we need to do is we need to get the record from the database we need to update that record and then save it back because the record that we have from the form will not be consistent anymore so how do we do that first of all let's create a new variable we'll call it exist because we're gonna check if this new uh, variable exists or not we'll put context dot contacts dot where and we're gonna put put the condition on what's what are we gonna find x dot id equal equal since we have already added the contact id as an input field as a hidden input field we can utilize this and something we can do here is we can put first or default async and let's await this perfect so right now let's summarize we have connected to our db context we told them please we need to go to the context table try to find for me any conditions based on this id equal the id that we have sent back from the view so if exist equal equal null so mean that this one doesn't exist so we just redirect back to the view we don't really need to do anything so so if it's not null we'll do something if it's null we'll just return back to the view with the contact so we'll put model state dot add model error view string dot empty and we'll put like a message invalid user to update invalid contact to update as simple as that and we return the view return view and we'll put contacts here there's a way better ways in order for us to avoid this duplication but for now we're just gonna be with this so the next step is what happened if the actually record if the record is actually exist it's gonna be very simple we'll just go exist dot first name we're just updating it based on the model that came contact dot first name exist dot last name similarly it will be contact dot last name exist dot mobile it will be contact dot mobile and lastly exist dot email it will be equal contact dot email perfect so right now we just updated the new object that we have with the object that came from the view and the last thing what we need to do is we need to update our database it's going to be as simple as calling the database dot save changes async this will automatically create the scripts that it needs to update the database and we're going to return redirect back to the action and we're going to go back to the index page which is perfect uh, what's the error here let's add this copy this put here the message let's um, let's attach the message here it's gonna be ex dot message yes okay great is there anything else perfect let's stop the application let's type dot not build make sure it's building successfully perfect dot not run perfect and now let's go back to the web browser and refresh it let's go back and that's edited let's make this one for example muhammad 1a 2a for example let's copy this 2a let's put here 222 and edit contact and we can see it has been updated successfully which is great this is what we wanted the last thing that we're gonna do right now is to create the delete so how are we gonna do that it's gonna be very very simple similarly to what we did with the edit we're gonna create the delete so let's go back to our controller and let's just copy this and let's just paste it here and instead of 
edit is going to be delete because because it's going to be the same information showing the only thing is we're not going to be able to add it uh, to edit it at all so let's just create the view for it again within the contacts folder right click new file we'll call it delete.cs html and it's going to be similar to the edit so basically we're going to define the model at model phone book dot models dot contact and we're gonna basically have the same form that we had for the edit we're gonna copy paste it all the only thing is instead of edit here since we're gonna be using the delete we're gonna put it delete and since the user will not gonna be able to change any of this information we're gonna make it disabled so the user will know they are not able to change anything and lastly we're gonna change here the word edit to delete and instead of warning we're gonna put danger so it will be a red button let's stop this and now let's run the application again let's refresh this page perfect now let's go to the delete perfect we are able to see that we cannot click it or edit it because it's disabled and the information is showing as it should be if we put press back on return to index we'll go back perfect so the last thing we need to do right now is just creating the delete functionality so how do we do that first of all we create the attribute so http post it's gonna be a public async task i action result delete it's gonna take the, the model so we're gonna put contact contact and similarly we're gonna just return a view in case everything fails return a view and now similarly we need to check uh, if the model state is valid so if model state dot is valid we'll continue else we'll, we'll get the uh, we'll return an error let's copy these because basically here we need to we forgot to return the contact my bad i apologize so let's copy these because it's going to be the same thing perfect again here since we're going to be communicating with the database we need to have a try catch perfect sometimes if you, if you double click on the tab button it will automatically auto complete so this is what i did right here so let's put an exception ex uh, we don't need that row we just need to add another model state error and we're gonna display what is this error and we're gonna put contact we need to add the dollar sign so we can concatenate the text so we're gonna be contact uh, sorry exception I apologize for this exception ex dot message okay great and then we're gonna return the view with the contact okay. the last thing is in case everything goes through we need to type the code first of all we're gonna get the object itself so var exists similar to one the one we did before equal await underscore contacts dot contact dot first or default async and we'll put the condition here x dot id equal equal contact dot id very simple straight to the point so once we have the exist we need to check if it's null or not so if exist not equal to null we are able to delete it else we're just gonna return the same matches as we returned here something went wrong or in we are unable to delete so invalid contact to delete and in case the contact actually exists we're just gonna call the database which is gonna be underscore contacts dot remove we're just telling it that it needs to 
contacts dot remove and that should remove it for us exist and then the last thing is we need to update the database so the first one tells it that okay we need to remove this field from the database the second one will actually execute the scripts against the database and deletes it and once everything is successful we're just gonna redirect to action and it's gonna be the index perfect save great so this is basically our full controller let's run it again and see what's gonna happen run the application let's go back to the browser let's refresh okay great let's see what happens if I click on delete we see the information is there we cannot edit it perfect and if I click on delete the record has been deleted if I could add a new one three for let's put it for example four the one four for email muhammad4 at email.com mobile 444444 for example and create contact perfect if I want to delete it let's edit it first for a for a for example edit perfect we can see it a a and if I want to delete it it will automatically be deleted great so basically within this video right now we have covered how to create a CRUD how we create the controllers, how we create an application DB context, how we create the views, how we set up the connection string within our database, and how do we do a full life cycle of a CRUD, create, edit, delete, and view all. The last thing that we want to add to this, it's a very simple thing, is we just want to add to the menu here uh, a link so we can able directly to come to this page. So we're just going to go to the views folder under the shared, underscore layout if we scroll down we can just copy this one paste it and instead of going to the home controller we're going to be going to the context and to the action instead of privacy we're going to go to the index and we'll give it a name contacts management for example perfect let's stop this and now let's run the application again and now we'll be able to see a new hyperlink on the menu for contacts management perfect so if i go back to home and i click on contacts management it will take me here great great this is the action that we want to implement so as a summary we have created a crud we have created the database we have created an application db context and we have created some migration scripts if you have any questions or any clarification please Put it down in the comments down below and i'll try to get back to you as soon as i can if you have any suggestions or you have any ideas as well please share them with me within the comments down below and uh, i really appreciate your time for watching this video i hope it's helped you and uh, thank you again for watching please like share and subscribe and see you on thursday within the next video Thank you very much.